Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA from Port Lincoln in South Australia, and I've got another YouTube video for you. This time um, I'm up at the VK5 RAC repeater site, which is at Pillarwater Hill, which is about 35 kilometres north of Port Lincoln. I've been uh, up here, so Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon now, I've been up here all morning cleaning the site out. We've, uh, we've got problems with rats. Not the nasty uh, city rats, but bush rats, Australian bush rats. And uh, they've been getting in here and making a mess. So I've been up here cleaning our equipment and the rack. Uh, everything's spick and span now, so I thought I'd show you what I've been up to. And this is the rack here. Um, I'll just step out the building a little bit. Uh, it's the same type of rack we use at the D Star repeater site at VK5 REX. And there were some spare racks up there, and one of them has been transported to uh, this site. In the bottom is our uh, duplexer. This was built by Graham, VK5GH. And uh, Graham and the guys at AREG have been great supporters of the uh, repeater equipment around uh, South Australia. And uh, I know there's a lot of repeaters which wouldn't be on the air without the help of um, the guys at AREG in Adelaide. Uh, in the back of the rack is a gel battery bank, We've got 250 ampere hours a gel battery bank to keep everything alive and the power fails. And also you can see a single cavity which we use for our APRS digipeter. Uh, going up in the rack is the power supply, which is a Mimark 5000 power supply. I think it's about 25 amp, uh, maybe 30 amp. 12 volt power supply, uh, extensive metering on the front, uh, load voltage, output current, battery voltage and uh, battery current, positive or minus as uh, is indicated on the front and extensive diagnostic LEDs as well, letting you know when uh, there are diagnostic issues or failures as well. Um, there's, a lot of, there's, a, there's a connector on the back which has a lot of uh, open collector outputs for telemetry use. I'm not using any of them at the moment, but uh, there is certainly uh, room to, uh, to monitor that remotely. Next in the rack is our APRS Digipeter. Uh, this is uh, the call sign VK5RAC-1. Uh, we've got a commercial ICOM radio here on 145.175, which is the Australian APRS frequency. It's a 25 watt mobile radio. Using an MFJ1270B TNC uh, using UI Digi firmware. Had the thing there. And uh, on top of that is a telemetry device. This is a site alert. These, uh, well, the site alert series has been designed by Warren Brown, VK3BYD. Um, I've built several of these up for the APRS Digipeters that I look after. And this uh, uh, gives us simple telemetry through the UI Digi equipped TNC Digipeter. And we can see things like uh, temperature. We've got a temperature probe in the front. And it does get quite warm up in here, and it has hit 50 degrees Celsius on occasion inside this building. And it's good to be able to see uh, exactly what it is. Um, it also gives an indication on battery voltage, so when the power fails, we can keep an eye on that. It also gives a analog value of push to torques per hour, so we can keep an eye on the the activity of the of the radio and the TNC. If it stops receiving, we can see immediately that it's not doing its digipeating job by the number of push to torques per hour. And uh, you can look at telemetry on the APRS.FI website and uh, look up VK5RAC-1, click on the telemetry tab and you can see the telemetry from this uh, from this digipeter. We also have uh, two inputs for um, contact closure. One is a power fail and we have a plug pack power supply or a wall wart if you're in the US and uh, it's just a simple relay that's energized by the DC output from the plug pack and when the power fails a contact closes and then the site alert both generates a message which goes to my APRS station at home and also generates an APRS object indicating a power fail. And the other contact closure we're using for a door alert. So if someone comes on the site, opens the door, 
it uh, transmits an APRS message and APRS object is generated. So uh, it's a fantastic diagnostics tool just to keep an eye on what's going on here and uh, really, really enjoy the, the, uh, the data that, that provides me. Next up in the rack is our repeater controller, a fairly innocuous looking die cast box and inside of that is a controller which was designed by Andrew VK5EX. A very basic controller, uh, provides Morse identification, uh, DTMF control, um, you can turn the repeater on and off, change the timeout, change the beep at the end of the transmissions, all sorts of things. And uh, you can hear it operating, if I grab my radio, the trusty icon radio, and I'll key it up and you'll... Uh... There we go. So you can see it uh, receiving, transmitting, doing its thing. Next to that on the shelf is a UHF radio. This is a Motorola Radius M120. This is a 10 watt radio and I think the power has been wound back to about 2 watts. And uh, this provides a link back to VK5REX. And that's where we have our IRLP node. IRLP node number 6510. Uh, so it's not on site here, we have a UHF link and that interfaces into the, uh, into the repeater. So if I actually key up you'll see that um, the link is transmitting. And the Morse went through again. Okay, above that is the FM repeater. This is a fairly vintage piece of equipment. This is the old Philips FM814 series. Designed probably I think in the late 70s consisting of a separate receiver and transmitter uh, designated the RX814 and TX814 transmitter uses phase modulation the actual exciter in this transmitter and the receiver are what you would find in an FM828 radio uh, I did show an FM828 radio in the uh, video of the IRLP node so if you look inside these pieces of equipment, you will see the, uh, the exciter receiver board from that radio. Uh, old technology, but one of the advantages of the receiver, this is, these are both, they're crystal locked, is the selectivity is bulletproof on the receiver. It has a tuned front end on the receiver, and that combined with the excellent duplexer provides stellar performance. We have a 200 watt FM, uh, 200 watt paging transmitter. Apologies, a 200 watt paging transmitter on the next tower over and we have no trouble at all and that transmits on 148 point something megahertz and uh, we have no issues with this. Our frequencies here are 146, 750 on transmit uh, with a negative 600 split so it receives on 146, 150. The uh, transmitter is rated at 50 watts, 100% junior cycle, it's got a fairly substantial heat sink in the PA section at the back. Uh, it also has its own power supply, so if the, our main power supply fails, we can run the rack from the power supply inside this radio. And we'll just head around to the back of the rack again, and we can see the rear end. Uh, Philips traditionally used uh, DIN connectors, so we've got a lot of um, six pin 270 degree DIN connectors in the back of the uh, radio equipment for interfacing and using RG400. Uh, coax for the uh, RF in and out to the duplexer. You can see our very basic DC distribution here. Uh, one of these days I'll upgrade this. Uh, I've got plans. I want to put some, an Anderson power pole uh, distribution system in here. I've got um, on the uh, repeater I have a uh, it plugs in via an Anderson power pole. I'd like to do that with the rest of the equipment, but I do have a, uh, if I come around here somewhere, I've got a, a cable which stays here, and I can pull that out and run equipment to, from the power supply. I'd like to we get everything else connected with that as well. Very convenient and uh, good solid connections. Okay, we'll head up the rack a little bit more. This is the space where our UHF, our 70 centimeter repeater will go. Um, it used to be, the call sign was VK5RPL, it was located closer to Port Lincoln, it's coming here. Uh, the frequencies have already been added to the license for this site and uh, it will be going in the top of the rack here. That uh, repeater at the back you see there, it's a commercial UHF repeater and uh, that will be 
already moving up, moving up in the rack a little bit more to make space. Our logbook for the site is in a tin can. The, uh, the rodents, the rats, have um, been causing trouble. And I came up here last year to find our logbook had been shredded by the rats and turned into a nest. So uh, now the logbook lives in a tin can. And uh, if we come down here, we can see some of the efforts I've gone into making uh, this place a little bit more vermin proof. Now there's cable entries here in the, through these pipes and I've put a mesh in front of that. And also there's a vent in the top of the building. I have, I'm suspecting they, they come in through here as well. We just get past the light. And if we look up there, you can see the, uh, I put some mesh across the vent hole in the roof of the building. So hopefully that will help keep them out. I have caught a rat in here once and uh, unfortunately it's, it escaped out the door. And I, what I should have done was shut the door and see how it gets out because um, um, it still puzzles me to come up here and find that uh, the rats have made a mess and I don't know how they get in. So uh, hopefully uh, with the addition of those mesh shields we will keep uh, the rats out. Also on the side here you can see a uh, this is a UHF CD repeater. This is on channel 8. Those unfamiliar uh, in the world with what we have in Australia. We have a 40 channel, or it used to be 40 channel, it's now an 80 channel allocation in the UHF band. 476 to 477 megs in that area we have 80 channels, 12.5 kilohertz channel spacing and that is a repeater on channel 8. It transmits on channel 8 and receives on channel 38. And that there is, a, is an old FM8 one, 828, that's a, a UHF version. That's a bit later than the VHF. And uh, you can also see a battery in the power supply and changer of equipment there. So, this is Michael vk 5 zda from Paul Lincoln in South Australia. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the VK5 RAC repeater site at Pillarwater Hill. 7-3 for now, and we'll talk to you again soon.